Hi, I'm Alicia and welcome to my channel Paper Craft Secrets. Today I'm sharing my latest kit which includes two birthday cards and an explosion box using the beautiful Minte Papers Dreamer collection. This video will take you step by step through exactly how to create an explosion box and exactly how to create the two coordinating birthday cards. Every single piece of material that you see in the creation of these projects comes together in one kit and is available for purchase from my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au. So you can purchase the kit from my website and you can watch the tutorial video and you can create these gorgeous birthday cards at home in your crafting space. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. We're going to start with the explosion box first and then we'll move on to the two, the two birthday cards. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is take one of your 12 by 12 white cardstock pieces and remove the barcode strip so that you've got an exact 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. Then you'll need your scoring board and you're going to score at 4 inches and 8 inches. Turn your paper, score at 4 inches and 8 inches. This will be the base for our box. We're going to trim the corners on the diagonal. So line up the score lines on your paper trimmer and trim a, a straight diagonal line or a triangle off the edge of each of the corners. This creates an octagon shape. Your next step is to fold along your scoring lines and you can use a bone folder to smooth down your folds and to create a nice crisp fold. The next step is to fold the corners. To do this we've got to fold them inwards so that we're bringing the two lines of the box together and we get a triangle on the inside of the box which we're going to smooth down with the bone folder and that creates the corner of our box. So you can see there we're just smoothing that down. So we sort of pinch and push the, that section together to create the corner of our box and then use your fingers to just sort of pinch it together. Once you've got that in position then you can lay it down on the table and get your bone folder and just smooth that crease down which creates the fold. Now for our last one, push those lines together pinch that little bottom corner section there with your two fingers then lay it down flat on your table and smooth it down with your boning folder. Our next step is to create the lid of our box. For the lid you need to take another 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and cut it six and a quarter by six and a quarter so you've got a nice square shape. Then you're going to need your scoring board again. We're going to score at one inch, turn your paper, one inch, turn, one inch, turn, one inch, turn. So you've got a one inch border all the way around your square and now you're going to trim some little triangles on the score lines to create tabs. So just a little trim and then a triangle, little triangle, little trim and a triangle and a little triangle and that will create the tabs for the lid of our box. Then you need to sort of fold on all of those folding lines, those scoring lines and smooth it down with your bone folder 
so that you've got nice firm creases to create the lid of your box. The next step is to add some glue to the little tabs and we're going to fold those up to create the lid. You need to hold that for a few seconds to make sure that the glue starts to take hold. And that's the lid of the box completed. So it will fit on beautifully onto our explosion box, just like that. So that's the base part of the box already completed and now it's time for decorating. Take this page here which has got the beautiful blue window on it and we're going to cut this at three and three quarters. Again at three and three quarters and again at three and three quarters. And then we're going to use that same measurement to make squares three and three quarters, three and three quarters, three and three quarters. This will be a little scrap that you need to hold on to. We will actually use those little scraps to decorate our lid. And our last little strip, the same measurements all the way along. Now don't throw out any of your scraps, so keep all of those little pieces together. I probably should have taken off the bar code strip when it was a bit easier, but anyway, that's okay. I'm gonna make another one there at three and three quarters. So I'll have four little strips and I'll have lots and lots of squares there. That's a little scrap we won't use. So, we're going to decorate the outside of our box with this paper. So just using uh, some liquid glue, just going to place our squares onto the sides of our exploding box on the outside of the shape. And when you do it, just leave a little white border around the edges so that you've got that nice crisp white border around the edge of your pattern paper. And one more on this side. There we go, that's looking good. Now we're going to turn the box over and we'll add some paper to the bottom of the box. And this just finishes it off nicely. Make sure that it's nice and straight. And that's our box so far, we're going well. Take the lid of the box and choose a square that you'd like to put on the lid. And then take your little scraps and we just pop those on the sides of the lid. And just sort of measure by eye as to an even white border around. It's just to add a little bit of colour to our box. There we go, that's looking really nice. So that is the outside of our box decorated. It's so simple and it looks so pretty. These little pieces here we will use for our triangles. So what you need to do is cut the square on the, on the diagonal to create two triangles. Then you need to cut that triangle in half to make another two triangles. So from each square, you'll have four little triangles.
This will go on the sides of our box there. Now you can choose whether you want to do a contrasting paper or whether you want to do the same paper. I like to do a contrast. So I'm going to choose the blue cloud sky paper, but you could do whatever you want it. So just putting glue on the back of those little triangles and popping them in the folded cornered section of the box. And this is a pretty easy way to decorate a box, but it looks so professional and it looks so pretty. It's very impressive. Getting those last two triangles on there. Making sure they're all secure. And that is that part done. So our next job is to choose this paper. It's got the blue door on it and the seat and it's got the birdhouse at the top. We're going to use this paper to decorate the inside of our box. So we have to repeat the same process of cutting our paper into three and three quarter inch squares. That's it, and then we're going to cut across this way at three and three quarters, and we're going to save our scraps. And across this way and saving our scrap and one more strip to do and there we go so we've got all of our little squares there ready to go we've got three strips we need to make another one at three and three quarters so we've got four strips ready to go. And now we can glue those onto the inside of our box. And we simply repeat that process that we did to the outside and we pop all of these new papers onto the inside. And the papers in this collection are absolutely beautiful. So many pretty flowers and birds and bird houses are just beautiful. Now we're going to move on to decorating the inside of the lid of our box. So again, just popping that in the middle there, balancing the white border all around the edge so that it's even, and then adding in our four strips onto the box. That's looking beautiful. We need to do our triangles now for our corners. So again, the same process that we did last time, cutting them on a diagonal from one corner to the other, creating two triangles, and then cutting that triangle in half to create four triangles. And our second box, cutting it into four triangles. Now we're going to glue those onto the corners of the box and I'm using the contrasting pattern which is sort of like a blue knitted jumper or blanket pattern to add some variety to the papers. Beautiful blue, lovely colour that one. Okay, and that's looking good. And that is the box covered with all sorts of paper. All the paper is done now. Now this sheet is in your kit and this is the Fussy Cutting Elements sheet. So what you need to do here is cut out all of these elements. So pause the video, um, maybe cut in front of the TV or take your time with cutting all of these out. I like to cut them out roughly first 
and then I cut them out individually. Okay, so here they are. They're all fussy cut out now. I'm just going to spread them out so we can have a look at them. And they're all looking so cute, aren't they? With cute little birds and lovely little baskets of flowers, bird houses, some lovely elements here. We're going to use most of those. This one I forgot to finish, so I'm just going to show you quickly how I fussy cut out that image there. All right, so now we're going to have a little think about the planning of our box. We need, possibly we need some images and words on the four sides of our box. And we also need things that are in the middle that are going to be standing up on acetate little stands so that they are standing up in the center of the box. In our kit are the most beautiful Prima flowers and we're going to use one of the really large Prima flowers for the center of, of our box. We're looking at this little birdhouse perhaps on this side. And maybe a basket of flowers, a suitcase of flowers. And a rose as our decorations. Now I like to have some words. I like to have some sentiments inside my box so that the person opening the box has something to read. So I'm thinking that we might use these sentiments from the free Minte sheet that you might have already received when you've, when you've purchased some Minte papers. I've actually got some of these cut up. So what I might do is just have a little look through here and see what sentiments I need. Might use four of them, one for each um, side of the box. And that'll just draw the eye to that sentiment. So we won't have to decorate too much because the papers are already are so beautifully decorated. So I'm just gonna use some little foam dots, some mounting dots to just elevate the picture on each of the sides and then I'm just going to do a little strip sentiment. So I just pop these little foam dots on, adhere the suitcase to this side of the box and then add some glue to the sentiment. And that's all I'm going to do for decorating the sides of the boxes because the papers really are so beautiful there's not a lot of need to cover them up. So just an image and a sentiment to decorate. You might like to put a little bird on your birdhouse. That would be cute, wouldn't it? I might use this little bird. There we go. And our last one, we've got the box of flowers or the basket of flowers and the sentiment. You can use any of those sentiments that are on that sheet. There we go. Now this is our acetate strips. Now I've put acetate in your kit, so don't, don't stress if you don't have any at home. Everything that you need is in the kit. Um, we're going to put our acetate strips coming up from the base of the box. So I've got that little blue window that looks really quite nice under the pink Prima flower. We've also got this sheet in our kits which is full of birds and butterflies. And I'm going to cut out some butterflies to add to my little acetate strips. I'm thinking that I will add some little foam dots to the back of this window and I'll place that in the middle of the centre of the box. Now 
Now, originally, I thought that I would do two little bits of acetate sticking up on each side of the window. So what I did was I just bent the acetate, folded it over and created like a little L-shaped piece and then I could just glue that on. But I actually end up moving these pieces quite a bit as I played around with the design of, of my butterflies and my birds because you do actually have to consider where you put your butterflies and your birds as to which way they're going to be facing and where the corners of the box come in. So there's a little bit of um, fiddling around while you just get them in the right spot. But originally I thought I'll put a blue bird here at the back and a butterfly next to it. Then I realized that these are going to need to face the front if I want everything facing the right way. I'm still happy with my flower in the middle. I'm thinking this little bird here on the end, but you'll notice that if I fold it, the box up, the tail of the bird gets hit by the side of the box. So I had to move him on top of the blue window. I'm putting two butterflies on that little strip there and I decide to move that up on top of the window as well. So I've decided to move all of those on top. You'll have a little play with it yourself and you'll get a feel for where you want your butterflies to go and just, just keep checking when you fold your box up that everything fits in without being squished by the sides of the box. So I'm just going through and adding butterflies and birds to all of my acetate strips. My next job is to just trim off any of the acetate strips that are hanging over the top of the butterflies or the birds. Because I did them at a variety of heights, I need to trim off any acetate that I don't need anymore. Let's fold our box up now and pop the lid on and let's decorate the top of the box. I found another large pink flower from the Prima Flowers and also some lovely soft crinkled ribbon in a lavender colour which is all included in the kit. You'll get enough ribbon and you'll get enough twine and you'll get enough flowers. Everything is included that I'm using. I'm not using anything that you won't receive. So I was just having a little play around. I made two bows out of the ribbon that I thought looked quite nice and I've got the little fussy cut tag there which I thought is quite nice. Then I was sort of tossing up on as to whether to use two flowers on top of the box. I, I wanted to include a twine bow, so I added that in. And then I was happy with that, so I thought I'll glue all of that down. So there's the two purple bows, the twine, and then we've got the two Prima flowers all together in there and then that's just a little fussy cut tag which I thought was very cute. Just trimming off those edges and I was thinking what about a little bit of cheesecloth that always adds to the feel especially like the shabby chic sort of feel so I've added in a little bit of cheesecloth as well just to soften the little cluster that we made. Now I've also added into your kit some, just a sample of some of these little Art Deco little balls. They're Prima or Art Alchemy and a lot of people use them to just decorate, add a little bit of a mixed media feel to the, 
to your flowers. You can paint them. You can splatter them with misting spray. I haven't done it because I'm not including misting spray or paint in the kit, but I have included some of these little, little balls so that you can have a try at just putting some glue on your flower and then adding some of those little balls in. And then if you wanted to take it to the next step with your mixed media, you could glitter them up or paint them up or um, splatter some, um, some sort of misting spray or paint over the whole box to just really make that mixed media feel. The box is pretty much finished except for the chipboard sentiment and we're going to add that a little bit later in the video. Let's take a look at how beautiful the box is looking. It's very, very beautiful. And we can fold it up. Pop our lid on. That's beautiful, isn't it? It's a very special gift to give to somebody. I've been making quite a few of these and I actually really enjoy it. And then when we open it, it explodes out and we've got all of our butterflies and our birds sitting around that beautiful prima flower. It's gorgeous. We will come back and add our chipboard sentiment at the end. You can put yours in now if you'd like. I'm just going to pop mine in at the end. And that's our beautiful box. We're going to move on now to the second part of this video, which is the creation of the other two birthday cards. So you're going to need your other two pages of white cardstock. You need to trim it at eight by eight inches and then you fold it in half. Trim at eight and eight inches and fold in half. And this is the base for our cards. Our next step is to take this paper. It's got the purple wooden side on one side of it we're going to cut that at seven and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. So there's the seven and three quarter inch and here is the three and three quarter inch. We'll need two of those because we're making two cards. Now for the hard bit to decide which side of the paper to use. I really love the blue side, but I decide to go with the purple because I think I'll layer over the top with the blue. So I'm going to use the purple for the back piece of paper even though it, it feels horrible covering up that gorgeous paper we're going to take our scraps from the 12 by 12 paper We're going to trim another piece down and this is measuring seven inches by three inches. And we'll do it on this one as well. Seven inches by three inches. Whoops, I just need to fix that up. So this will layer on top. I'm going to do two layers of paper 
with two layers of cardstock behind it to give us that lovely white border. I'm just using some recycled cardboard that I'm going to glue on the back of that to elevate that from the base of the card. So just using liquid glue and placing that cardboard down. And then I'll stick that onto the base of the card. Very good. Now, this is where I'm gonna use the pretty blue paper. This one's going to measure six and three quarters by two and three quarters. So there's the two and three quarters. Hang on a minute, I'm just cutting off the bar barcode. Six and three quarters, two and three quarters. And that'll fit perfectly on top. Six and three quarters, two and three quarters and that'll fit perfectly on top. And then we just glue that down onto the white cardstock using the little white border around the edge. Glue that down. And that is looking good. That is looking beautiful. I love those papers, they're just gorgeous. All right, what to do next? I'm going to use this blue door. I pick out the white window, but I don't use the white window. I'm only going to use the door. So I'm cutting that door in half, and I'm gonna use one part of the door on each page, on each card. Now I've got a big floral cluster here and a big floral cluster there for the centerpiece of my card. I'm going to cut some recycled cardboard to go underneath these layers so that I get some dimension. I'm going to put one on the back of each of the doors. And that will add some height to my card. This, these two cards are very fancy. They're certainly far from flat. I'm going to use a little bit of cheesecloth. Underneath the floral clusters. So I'm happy I'm going to glue that blue door down. On both cards I'm, I'm happy with that I'm happy with where that's sitting sort of glued it onto the left hand side of the card I like that little cluster there I'm just going to pop that in underneath the blue door and I've got another little cluster here that I can do the same on this card I will use some recycled cardboard on the back of my floral clusters. To create more depth and layering space between my layers. And then I'll glue that those floral clusters onto that card. Beautiful. How easy is that? Now the Prima flowers that are in your kit are these beautiful flowers here. And I'm absolutely in love with Prima flowers. So I'm really excited to be able to use them in my kits. I've picked a pink and a cream flower for both cards. This is the beautiful Bloomer chipboard 
It's laser cut chipboard that we are going to be using on these cards and I'm super excited to also be using this amazing high quality chipboard in my kits. I ordered this in especially from overseas and I love the fonts and the designs of their chipboard. So I'm just playing around with where things might go. This is just a little bit of designing of where, they, where the flowers might be, where the chipboard sentiment might be, what I think looks the best. I'm cutting some more of that beautiful purple ribbon. So I'm combining my favorite ribbon, my favorite flowers, my favorite chipboard, and my favorite papers to create this card. And that just makes me so happy to have all of these beautiful elements together on the one card. I've made two purple bows and I'm adding those in to the card. I'm gonna have them underneath the flowers. I'm also going to add in another purple bow. So I'll actually have two bows on both cards and I'll also have a twine bow. So there'll be three bows all together, two out of ribbon and one out of twine. So these cards are chunky. They're, they're a very special birthday card. They're nothing that could be sent in the mail. In this class where we are really playing with layers and embellishments. I'm also going to add some cheesecloth in there which will add another different type of texture. So there's the cheesecloth and there's the flowers and then we'll put in the ribbon sort of underneath. Then I'll put in the twine bow and then I'll add the last ribbon. And that's really pretty. That sentiment will go up there. sort of needs, sometimes needs to be squished in a little bit to avoid any gaps. All right, so here we go again. Cheesecloth. Flowers. Ribbon. Twine. Ribbon. Can you see how pretty that is? The sentiment, I want it just to be a little bit elevated at the top. Now, sometimes you do need to pull at your cheesecloth and you know, really make it go where you want it to go. So don't be afraid to sort of tug at that and pull it out and make it wispy. Now with the sentiments, I want them to be slightly elevated I'm going to use two of these sort of circular pictures. I'm not sure exactly what those pictures are called. There's three circles. I'll show you here. Three circles in blue. And then my happy birthday can be glued onto those three circles. And then I'll just elevate it a little bit from the rest of the card. You do have to be fairly gentle with the, the chipboard sentiments. You don't want it to, you don't want to be too rough with those because they are fairly delicate. I'm just looking for something I can put under my happy birthday. I might choose this little basket of flowers. I'll stick that down there. And then my happy birthday can be glued onto those flowers. 
There we go. That's looking so beautiful. You could add in a little birdhouse if you wanted to. I'm going to add some more butterflies because I am obsessed with butterflies and I love cards with butterflies so it seems perfect to add some butterflies to these cards seeing they have all of the elements that I love. So I'm putting a big one down there on that angle and a littler one up higher on another angle. One over here, a large one and then a little one there. So cute. Now we're going to have a little play with our little art deco balls and put some glue inside our Prima flower and then just pop a few little of the art deco balls inside your flowers. And don't forget at the conclusion of this video you could use your own misting spray or your own paints to sort of splatter over the cards to just add a three a mixed media effect if you wanted to now i did say that i wanted to come back and add a happy birthday sentiment onto my exploding box card and so i'm just going to glue that on now this is the happy birthday there's three sentiments that come in the kit and two of them are joined and this one is not joined so it's two words separated so i'm just going to glue that at the front on the acetate strips that's right pop the lid on you know you've got one flower left i don't know if you want to use that or save that for something else just going to add a tiny bit more glue there so that that day doesn't fall off. Now I hope you've enjoyed this project because I have loved creating these cards. They have everything on them that I love, just butterflies, flowers, pretty ribbon. Yeah, this is really the type of card that I love to create. And it was fun creating the explosion box too for something different. If you would like to create these cards along with me, make sure you head on over to my website at www.papercraftsecrets.com.au to purchase your kit. These papers are sadly discontinued. So when I sell out of this kit, there will be no more kits with these papers so if you are keen please make sure you you stop on over straight away pick up your kit and we can create together i hope you enjoyed this class thank you so much for watching and have a lovely crafty day